Good afternoon, everyone. This is an emergency message. If you are anywhere in the north, northeast border with Canada, these warnings are real, and it's the coldest temperatures that you have experienced in your entire lifetime. In-depth analysis in this video of where this storm is going to track, how cold it's going to get. These wind chills are ridiculous at 70 degrees Fahrenheit below zero. And looking at the actual ground temperatures, they're looking at minus 40 degrees to minus 50 degrees Fahrenheit. I'm going to take you through the track of the storm, that dark green. Power grids are very possibly going to go down during this event due to so much draw. The green is the most intense. Purple would on its own be a severe storm and cold warning, but this is something that we have not seen yet. The intensification of the grand solar minimum is here. You're going to need emergency measures and you should be preparing, I mean right now. If your power goes out, you're literally going to have minutes to get down to the basement and try to keep yourselves in a single room so you do not freeze to death in your homes. I personally feel the media is downplaying the severity of the event, even using catchphrases as temporary icy cold doesn't disprove global warming, but the sun is decreasing in its activity state, and these are the types of storms to be expected from this point forward. And it's going to get more intense next year and the following year in 2021. And our crops are going to be affected. They already are being. Here's the timeline going out. We just did, moved into the green 2019. The intensity ramp up needs to come another two or three times up from all the changes you've seen over the last four to five years. This is an indicator. The media is trying to have you believe it's only in the United States, but the exact same thing is happening over Europe. And Ryan Maui has dubbed it as Barney Freeze because there's so much purple on all the maps that you're looking at. I'm looking at Grand Solar Minimum Cold. Click to subscribe and follow ADAPT2030 through the social media and YouTube to get more information on why this is happening and how it's going to affect your lives, your families as we move forward through the next five years of Grand Solar Minimum Intensification. Starting over here on the Simplistic USA Today article detailing Arctic air invades. I personally feel they are downplaying this event. They're calling it Barney because there's so much purple on all these maps that we're about to look at. Ryan Maui, I've linked everything below in the description box so you can follow down the temperature forecasts, all the charts, get the latest so you can keep yourself safe. This is no joke. These are the coldest temperatures you have experienced in your entire life up to this point. They're looking at possibly the coldest day in the city's history, Chicago, Illinois. This place is cold all the time in the winters. This is a statement beyond statements. Records in that city go back to the late 1870s. So when you see the media coming out using words such as life-threatening, dangerous, unprecedented, and these are the daily record lows that are going to be shattered as we move through. Look for tens of thousands of cold records to be smashed during this event. This event's going to unfold over the next three days. And they're looking at some wind chill temperatures in Minnesota in the neighborhood of minus 70 degrees Fahrenheit. Yeah, that's right. 70 degrees Fahrenheit below zero. So extreme in many places that the temperature monitoring stations can't even pick up how cold it gets because it pegs at minus 33 degrees Fahrenheit. When the National Weather Service puts out life-threatening and historic wind chills into their forecasts that are still behind because the wind chills that they're looking at up around some of the Great Lakes are going to be pushing 50 to 60 degrees below zero. The updated models are here. Let's take a look. The storm has been tracking. This is off the GFS model. The white vortex centered over the Great Lakes is what you're looking at. That strange striation across desert southwest, also unusual. As we move into the 30th, you can see actually low how this is going to dip into the U.S. Now, Canada, they're used to this type of cold all the time. But the U.S. power grid and our infrastructure is not used to these temperatures. It's going to be an all-time draw on the grids, and I would not be surprised if a grid goes down due to draw on the power of people trying to heat their homes. And we're taking a look at the temperature anomaly here, 850 millibars. The light green is what you're focusing on. Anyway, in a winter storm, that light pink there, that would be a warning in itself. But when we get up to these greens, I've never seen this. You just don't see greens like this coming across the continental U.S. The storm's going to continue to track to the east and south, 
eventually coming over Ohio, Indiana, and pushing further south down into the border with Virginia. So as it reaches the coldest point during this event, this is what you're looking at here. On January 30th, throughout the day, even far down into the southeast U.S., Alabama, Georgia, looking at something minimum 20 degrees Celsius below normal. This is not a Fahrenheit chart. This is Celsius, which means it's actually cooler than Fahrenheit. They're looking at around 30 degrees Fahrenheit under the normal temperatures. We're going to watch this thing track and then look how it drags and the periphery comes through the southeast U.S. The homes down there are not built for this storm. Again, I'm going to come back to say you need emergency preparations because I do believe the power is going to be lost at least one of these areas in the United States. Taking a look here, zooming in on the Great Lakes temperature anomaly map. That green is rarely seen except in the Arctic. This is not because of CO2. This is because of the intensification of the grand solar minimum. I'm going to wide that out here further for you. Taking a look at some of the wind chills, the way they break it down. Minus 58, minus 60, minus 64 degrees Fahrenheit below zero. And as we pull through, these are going to be the wind chill temperatures over the next five days for that Great Lakes region. Actually, the Midwest. Still looking at minus 50, minus 60, minus 40, below zero off to the west, and that storm is going to continue to track south. So some of these temperatures are literally going to be unprecedented in Virginia, Kentucky. And when I do look at this map, I can see why Ryan Maui came out with the meme of Barney, the super freeze winter storm record-breaking event. And taking a look at the apparent temperature, that includes the wind chill. We're looking at something like 51 degrees below zero at Chicago International. Flights are not going to be taken off during this time. And to get an indication of how this storm is going to drop temperatures so quickly, Chicago International went from 6 degrees below zero down to 51 degrees below zero in 24 hours. We're starting to see the same thing here in Minneapolis. The storm is real. These temperatures are unprecedented, but they do bottom out around minus 50 degrees Fahrenheit. 50 below zero, it stabilizes, and then the front's passing. Now take a look at the wide out here. The brutal Arctic cold is going to come for the rest of the week. And these surface temperatures are literally 35 to 55 degrees Fahrenheit under the normal temperatures that you're used to. USA Today, very simple graphic here. I wish they would have colored it a bit different for the urgency of the matter. And they're trying to blend it so you don't see how extreme this storm is because they need to keep the global warming narrative pushing full steam ahead. The colors need to be very different. That needs to be an alert red. Anywhere you see that dark purple. So let me wide it out into a more professional chart here. Weathermodels.com. You can see how the low temperatures are going to extend all the way past Texas into southern Mexico. That'll sweep over the Yucatan Peninsula. Florida going to get down to freezing. I was calling for iguanas falling from the tree in the forecast a few days ago for the same storm front. But this is what's going to roll out over the next five days. These extreme temperatures, the only place where water is not going to turn into ice on this map are some places in California coastal and southern Florida. And if you're in the northeast, your skin turns to ice. Now, a different look here from tropical tidbits. These are Fahrenheit temperatures I dug in. Most of the weather models are always done in Celsius, but here we are, Fahrenheit you can see the progression of the storm again. You get a couple hours of warning, and then it just drops. Literally from the point of being incredibly bundled up where you could survive outside until you have five minutes to get inside before you get frostbite types of temperatures in 24 hours. You got to think about the homes in this particular instance here. What's happening where it's going to be 50 degrees Fahrenheit below zero, they're going to draw an enormous amount of power. They're going to be rerouting from other states. They're not going to be rerouting power from Canada because they're experiencing the same thing. They're on all-time record demand up in Canada at the moment, so Canada can offer no extra power. Our grid is aged anyway. The temperatures are going to be so cold that the lines are going to be grounding out through the cold. Literally, those lines are not built the same way they are in Alaska to be insulated. This electricity is going to follow the path of least resistance, and it's going to be the cold. So it's a possibility that the lines are literally going to ground out through the cold air in transmission from point A to point B on those high-tension lines. 
You got to consider emergency measures during this event. Consider moving into the basement. And when I say that, don't think about moving into the basement after it happens and your power goes out in the middle of the night. The basements are going to be warmer. They're insulated by the ground. And minus 40 or 50 degree Fahrenheit temperatures above the ground, it's still going to probably be low freezing inside the basement, but it's going to be much warmer than up in single rooms. You're not going to be able to survive in your home the way you do now. You're all going to have to get into a single room. If you're not preparing now, you need to. Before, right now, during this thing, you need to have all of this. Flashlights, emergency candles, ways to prepare food. You're not going to be able to use heating blankets. You're not going to be able to charge anything if the power goes out. What about the water? Batteries, medicine, blankets. You're going to need all of this indoors. The key is basement or a single room, but still in a single room above ground, you're going to have a very difficult time riding this thing out at these kind of temperatures. This is why I think the media is downplaying it. And when we get to the southeast U.S., they're completely not ready for almost zero degree Fahrenheit temperatures. The homes are not insulated for that. And the all-time power draw in the southeast U.S., last year they were like one-fifth of one-eighth of an inch away from going down on the grids down there. And it was 20 degrees Fahrenheit warmer than this event coming. So look for power outages. Grids are going to go down. They're going to be grounding out due to these temperatures. And the media doesn't want to talk about it. They're saying it's a temporary icy cold front. These are the coldest temperatures in your entire lifetime. Yet they want to keep pushing the global warming narrative. It doesn't disprove global warming. Now we're heading into this grand solar minimum. The sun's intensity is declining. We're going to repeat something like we haven't seen in 400 years. Astrophysicists have already put out forecasts so when the planet's going to start cooling. It's right now. This is a very huge in-your-face indicator that this grand solar minimum is intensifying. And from this point forward, these storms are going to become normal. That's the thing. The lines that you're seeing are the magnetic waves on the sun. And when they get to that apex and they're not parallel, they're canceling each other out. And when they cancel each other out, the sun's activity state declines. They've mapped it out how quickly this is going to take place over which solar cycles. And the wider the wave is... The colder it's going to get on our planet and the more extreme the weather is going to become, the magnetosphere weakens and the jet streams are allowed to go out of their flow. They're no longer locked in place. And this is why you're seeing a lot of these weather extremes across the planet because our jet streams are moving into different locations that they haven't been to in hundreds of years, literally 400 years. This cycle occurs once. We're in it again. The coloration is a great demarcation. We've just moved out of the yellow into 2019 which is that green shaded area and you can see the intensity ramp up that's expected through 2019 to 2020. It's supposed to get colder, more ferocious storms, shorter growing seasons and somehow they're still trying to push global warming instead of talking about what is happening with our sun and what's going to happen to our society and civilization when our food prices triple and quadruple. And the University of Maine's climate reanalyzer used in almost every single mainstream media corporate news article. So quippy. Only showing this map for one reason. All weather is local. But I want to compare that with tropical tidbits. Because climate reanalyzer has the hottest temperatures on the web. So if you're going to compare data sets, you can go to University of Alabama, Huntsville, Dr. Roy Spencer's site. But the mainstream media loves that data set from Climate Reanalyzer because it shows the warmest temperatures. So I put these side by side here. I really want you to delve into this chart. Climate Reanalyzer above, tropical tidbits below. Notice the amount of cold that tropical tidbits is picking out, especially with the anomalies, compared to how homogeneous everything is in the Climate Reanalyzer models. And this is another reason why I think that they're really downplaying any of these events in cold. You're going to start asking questions like, why is it 50 degrees below zero outside when we were told global warming would bring less severe winters? And to explain that somehow a pocket of warmer air displaced all of that cold down into the U.S. just doesn't make sense because there's not that much displaced atmosphere up in the Arctic. This is grand solar minimum cold. In the 1600s, people abandoned cities in Norway, Sweden. They emptied out the cities 90%. 
because they couldn't survive there. Their infrastructure couldn't cope. They couldn't get supplies in. The ports all froze over. They were completely locked off. We're going to see the exact same thing. If our grids go down continually year after year because we can't cope with the demand of electricity draw due to these extreme cold events, it's just a repeating cycle in history. Grand solar minimum cold. Please subscribe to ADAPT2030. Follow me through the social media. I explain this in a podcast and why all of this is happening and how it's going to affect your family, the economy, food prices as we move forward through these next three to four years because this is where the most change is taking place right now. It'll stabilize eventually around 2025, but then we're going to get the second wave. And case in point, you think if we had such extreme temperatures in the United States, they would also say, wow, the same exact thing's happening over in Europe. Isn't that coincidental? Two places on the planet about to get the coldest temperatures ever recorded for at least these last three generations. But nope, it's just the U.S. They totally forgot the same exact event happening over in Europe. This is developing. These temperatures through Germany are going to do the exact same thing they're doing in Chicago. Now, with that said, I'm going to leave you with a little beauty here. The ice halos. Incredible. Mount Orr. These are coming from Extreme Weather EU. And during these uncertain times, I've teamed up with My Patriot Supply Long-Term Food Storage. A nice, affordable starter kit. Two-week food supply, 1,500 calories per day. Breakfast, lunch, and dinners, plus... The four-gallon storage containers included in that. This is a good first step in getting more self-sufficient. And if you click through the Prepare with Adapt 2030 page in My Patriot Supply, you can get this starter kit for 75 bucks. Please remember there's a limit of two per household in this special offer. And if you'd like more information about the Grand Solar Minimum 30 Minutes at a Go, Mini Ice Age Conversations podcast. And if you like your information in snippets of one minute or less, run down on Adapt 2030 social media feeds, and while you're at it at the website oscrops.org, sign up for the newsletter.